what we've shown at this point is using controller to simplify using Nginx as a load balancer API. I think some of the more advanced use cases or elements you guys are doing, that can still all be done with Nginx Plus. It can all still be scripted with CI, CD, and that's what historically our customers have always done. So a lot of the stuff you're talking about where you see manually doing it in the controller UI, most customers are doing it today using their own tooling that they've had to build. The goal with controller is first onboard people that couldn't get to Nginx Plus because they didn't have that tooling, and then step two, take those advanced users and move all that automation up into the control plane so they don't have to do it themselves. So I think you guys have rightly poked at some of the areas that are on the roadmap because of the more advanced users, but a lot of folks for us just haven't even found Nginx Plus to be accessible because they didn't have a place to start even at the manual level. So. Um, the reason why I start there is because, as you can imagine, that's our philosophy with service mesh as well. Um, the most common question we get from customers is, do I even need a service mesh? Uh, and I would hope it's not controversial to say, but the answer is no. Most customers do not need a service mesh. And it's because, first of all, Kubernetes, in, its, in essence, is a very good layer four service mesh. What most customers want is the layer seven, but they have to operate at a significant level of scale and complexity before they really want the overhead of Istio and sidecar proxies and all the instrumentation that would be needed. And so, I'll, I'll, so what we see is instead that customers kind of start step one. I just need to think about Nginx as an ingress controller. So I've, I've gone to a container-based application. I have, whether it's a monolithic or microservices-based containers, I don't really care. I just need a way of getting traffic in and out of my Kubernetes pods. And that's where, by the way, vast majority of customers are actually today. They're just getting started and thinking about Kubernetes orchestrated environments, and they just need a in, in, good way to get traffic in and out. There is an interim step before a service mesh that we see the next set of customers tap out, which is I'm essentially going to deploy Nginx as a specialized load balancer within that environment where I'm not quite doing a load balancer or proxy for every single microservice, but instead I have a router mesh, if you will, instead of a service mesh where it sits there and handles all of that traffic. And so it allows me to dynamically insert new services and scale up. But at this point, we're talking about dozens of microservices, up to around 100. It's really not until companies are up in the hundreds to thousands of microservices where it makes sense to have, uh, in this case, every single service has its own proxy. All of that is then managed and orchestrated via the service mesh. And so our goal is to create another tab within controller, just like you see load balancing, just like you've seen API management, where you'd be able to handle all of this microservices networking. You could push a config to easily manage it as an ingress controller, upgrade it to where you then want that router mesh and all the policies for going between your microservices, or a full-blown sidecar proxy. So the goal here is, just to be clear, it'd be an alternative to Istio and not based on Istio. Um, we have Istio compatibility in that we have the Engine Mesh product I talked about earlier, which allows you to insert Nginx at the data plane, and we'll explore things like API. Once the API, to be able to push configuration information in and out of Nginx, there's no reason why we couldn't also think about working with Istio. But the main thing that we've seen, and sorry, I know I'm going really fast, is that ultimately we're sort of in the beginning stages of this, and it's a classic cost complexity trade-off. So what we think is the blue line is sort of the complexity of your environment as you begin to have more and more microservices, more and more applications. And right now, there is a crossover point where it makes sense for service mesh. And I think that's what Istio today is solving the need, is for that last 10% of customers that are operating in extremely kind of high-end environments. What we want to do is architect a simpler service mesh that isn't Istio-based, that uses many of the common tooling, but exposes it inside the controller. So we'll be able to grab a lot of the tooling that folks are using, uh, tools from HashiCorp, examples, so that we don't have to necessarily have the full blow, and we think we can push the economics of this curve down so that people can embrace service mesh earlier on when they don't have kind of hundreds to thousands of microservices. And so that's something that's coming out this summer, kind of second half of the year. We're going to be coming out with our, our service mesh solution that goes sort of deeper. So much like you've seen today, it's going to be sort of the third module in the overall portfolio 
where you're using Nginx at the data plane, and then we're exposing workflows, tools, and integrations at the control plane that are specific to certain use cases, knowing that most customers are gonna have some mix of all three. Maybe I'm configuring a load balancer to then have some API gateway sit behind it, and then in the microservices environment, I'm doing Kubernetes orchestration as well as sidecar proxies. So the idea is to, to, to combat that complexity and, and sprawl that most customers are have, and do it with a solution that isn't quite necessary for that sort of high-end environment that service meshes are targeting today. I, I know we need to finish up. Just a quick question in 10 seconds. How are you making service mesh simpler than Istio, who are making big strides to make their service mesh simpler uh, and are already have that kind of market share? Yeah. So part of it will just be in the amount of tooling and heavyweight aspect of the solutions that's simpler to deploy. But also our goal is it'll extend beyond Kubernetes based environments. So you can have one solution that's ma handling uh, a sidecar proxy sitting in front of a monolithic application, in front of a Kubernetes environments, in front of VM environments. And so you'll be able to pull all that in and have one look across the entire topology instead of having a separate domain for Istio, a separate domain for monolithic environments. So I, the simpler is, is in the reduction of the number of tools. Although I do think Istio itself, the feedback we've got is it's still pretty hard to configure. It's getting a lot better. Uh, and the cloud providers are doing a great job of exposing it as a managed service. And so we want to sort of provide that sub level of simplicity, kind of what you've seen AWS and GCP and others do. That was not 10 seconds. Ken looks nervous. Oh, you're good. <laughs> yeah. So that's actually all we really wanted to go through today. Thank you for bearing with us as we get through a lot of content in just two hours. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and, and good. Um, I you know, certainly encourage you to take some of the Nginx goodies home and, and start playing with Nginx if you haven't already. It is a very versatile tool. Uh, and then I definitely <coughs> recommend hooking up a floppy drive and listening to the sweet, sweet sound of a three and a half inch floppy running a website.